The countdown is on. We are just five days away from Apple's highly anticipated fall event. Next Tuesday, CEO Tim Cook is expected to unveil the company's new iPhone 17 and possibly, I don't know, it's a rumor, the much-awaited foldable iPhone. What about its AI offerings, though, right? I mean, that's what everybody wants to know. Apple has lagged behind other players, including OpenAI and Perplexity, and rolling out Gen AI. But now, Apple says starting next year, really, we have to wait that long? It'll launch its own AI-powered web search tool into its Siri voice assistant. Shares of the tech giant, as I said earlier at the top of the show, showing a little gain here, 2.5% on the week. Longtime Apple Bear, Craig Moffat of Moffat Nathanson today, changing his tune. He upgraded the stock from sell to a neutral. He's going to join us next week to break down investor reaction to Apple's event. But before then, one of Apple's biggest partners is Lumentum, which provides the optical, com optical components used in the iPhone's facial recognition and other 3D sensing features. But being Apple's leading laser chip provider only scratches the surface of what Lumentum does. Joining me now in a Fox Business exclusive is Lamentum CEO Michael Hurlston. Well, I'll tell you what your stock is doing today. It's hitting an all-time high. Good day to be on the show, Liz. Thanks for having me. Well, we take credit for that. You, um, and you should. That's why you're probably hitting an all-time high. But what is it that is really giving you wind beneath the wings of this company over the past couple of years? I mean, watching it do as well as it's doing right now. Look, our, our big story is the data center, and you covered it on one of your previous segments. We are the glue that holds the data center together. The connectivity inside a data connect uh, in, inside the data center is fiber optics, and we make the fiber optics components that power the data center. So it has been a wild ride. We are sold out of almost everything we make. And uh, the future is incredibly bright. Hold up, you're sold out. Who are your biggest buyers right now? We sell to companies that make subsystems, the NVIDIAs, the Googles, the Amazons, that actually provide and power these data centers. And we are partnering with these guys and our business is, is just on fire. I'll tell you, you know, you think about exactly what it is Lumentum does. So there is a voluminous amount of information moving through data centers, and it's only getting bigger. So explain to our viewers exactly what your lasers and your optical offerings do to speed that up and to make sure that these data centers can handle that kind of traffic. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, Liz. Look, everything, move, the fastest thing is light. And so what fiber optics essentially does is move traffic at the speed of light. You're basically converting electrical signals that come from servers, memory, whatever it might be, and transferring that to light. Mm. And so inside the data center, everything is moving at light speed, but now you're trying to connect these data centers to each other and get super computing power by having one data center that might be in Minneapolis, talk to another one that might be in Las Vegas. That's all done over fiber optics. Can you quantify how much revenue is tied directly to your AI data center business today versus maybe a year ago? It's, it's, it's astounding. I think we've gone from maybe 20, 30% of our, our revenue going into the data center to now 80 85% of the revenue. So it has really? been a huge swing toward these hyperscaler kind of customers. I, I'm, I'm really stunned to see that kind of jump. Well, that really explains maybe in part why your stock is doing so well. That said, we take it back to Apple, Apple's big event next Tuesday. So tell me what's inside the iPhone 17 that I, if I broke it apart, I'd say Lumentum. You, you, you hit it in the, the preamble. We make the Face ID, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a great partnership with, with Apple to come up with that technology. It turns out it's lasers. Again, the same things that power this data center that we were talking about, moving things at the speed of light. The Face ID is actually based on a bunch of low-power lasers that project, you can't see it, but project dots on your face and those that comes back into the iPhone. Is that you, how it works? That's how it works. To log on? Yeah, it's basically, a, you can't see it. It's a tremendous amount of energy goes into eye safety to make sure it's not gonna blind you or do anything like that. Mm. And it projects a bunch of dots on your face and that reflection goes back into the phone and maps it uniquely 
to your face, to my face, whoever it might be. Is that what's going to be in the foldable iPhone? Well, Liz, I, no, no one knows. Only our, only Tim knows. I thought I was going to sneak be. that in, and only it would be Tim. a question that you'd answer. Oh wait, I wasn't supposed to answer that. <laughs> only he knows. Only he knows whether there's going to be a foldable, foldable phone. You know, there are other companies, I'm thinking Qualcomm, that had to work really hard to get out from under that question of aren't you overexposed to Apple because, of course, they made the modem chips and then they no longer do. What's your exposure to Apple? It's, it's actually relatively small. Okay. Uh, we had a significant exposure to Apple some years back. It was a big, big portion of our revenue because the Face ID chips were actually relatively large. They've shrunk in size. Our revenue exposure to Apple now is somewhere in the five, six percent of our total revenue. So it's much smaller than it was just going back a couple of years. Uh, you just hit an even higher record while we've been talking. The stock right now up four and three quarters percent. I, I got to ask about competitors. Huawei of China. I guess you worked with them in the past, but then of course we have the. Uh, the wall going up between America and China. But when, when you talk about Huawei, you know, they're now in restrict, they're restricted from being in certain markets. Has that improved your market share? You know, what's been interesting is the move from the U.S. hyperscalers to buy U.S. source product. So we're one of the few names that uh, is U.S. headquarters and actually has a U.S. manufacturing footprint. That has really worked in our favor. If you look back in time, we did. You're, right, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. We had a pretty decent exposure to Huawei, but we were able to move that away and now focus on these hyperscalers and take advantage of that U.S. presence to, to help us pick up some market share and, and a, a bigger footprint. Tell me about the relationship with NVIDIA. It's a strong relationship. I mean, they are really the, the, the engine powering all of this AI in, inside the data center. And we work with them on something called co-packaged optics, which essentially means our optical engine abuts their switches. And that's something that Jensen talked about in his last GTC. We're really proud to be a, a key partner for them. And we think this co-packaged optics is going to be an innovation that's going to really catapult their switches to the forefront and really make be a differentiator for them. Well, as all of this investment takes hold, we know at some point it will peak and then maybe pull back a little bit and then the price pressures come in. I'm sure the hyperscalers are trying to strike very tough deals with you. Are you still able to keep your margins where you'd like them to be? Yeah, right now we are completely supply constrained. So it's a great position to be in. Are you hiring? We are hiring. We are supply constrained. We are doing whatever we can to meet the customer demand. You're right. At some point, that there's going to be a, a flat spot. We don't know when that'll come. We're trying to moderate our spending just to make sure that when that flat spot comes, we're not caught flat-footed. But uh, we feel really, really good about the near future. Probably out the next six, eight quarters, we see nothing but uh, up and to the right. This is a, a really interesting uh, focus because we tend to start first at the, the picks and shovels, et cetera. And while you could be considered one of the picks and shovels of the AI data centers, it's a name that some of our investor audience have not particularly focused on, but we, we think it's really crucial and important, especially as the traffic through the cloud and through these data centers increases. You only see that getting hotter? Yeah, you're, you have it right. I mean, there's traffic inside the data center. We, we see that, and we're the backbone that, that makes all that work. But then you have traffic that's going between data centers. It's only, you can't concentrate all this large language model in one data center. You need multiple of them to ch daisy chain together to make all this stuff work. And then, interestingly enough, one of our key products is submarine cables. Right, so we actually supply, if you want to connect data centers from Europe to those in North America, how do you do it? Well, there's submarine cables that run back and forth, and we make the, the drivers that drive those submarine cables. Oh, my gosh. 
very, very fascinating. And uh, let's give a shout out to UC Davis. You're a graduate of UC <laughs> Davis. I like the UC <laughs> system, University of California. You've done good from cow country. How about that? How about that? <laughs> I'm not a golden bear, but we'll, we'll take it. What is the, the, Davis, <laughs> the, the Davis? It's an Aggie. Oh, oh, okay. There you go. Don't, don't say that too loudly. I know. Well, so are the Texans, aren't they? <laughs> All right. Great to see you, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you.